Hello everyone, how's it going? My name is Dan the Tutor. In today's video, we're gonna be discussing Snell's Law of Refraction. First, refraction, as opposed to reflection, just means the bending of light. We all know that reflection is light bouncing off a surface, that's what reflecting means, but refracting just means bending. And we're actually gonna see light rays bending today, very cool stuff. So let's just get into the equation and what the scenario looks like. So first, the equation for Snell's law is n1 times sine theta1 is equal to n2 sine theta2. The n's here are called the index of refraction, and it basically describes the speed of light in the surface compared to the speed of light in a vacuum. But honestly, that's not the important part. The important part is n is just the index of refraction. They normally give it to you. The angles here, theta one and theta two, is how much the light is bending by. So to give you an example, let's say I have a light beam entering a surface, could be glass, could be water, could be ice, could be plastic, could be anything. And depending on what surface we're entering, the light that is, then that is going to cause the light to bend a little bit. So first, this dashed line is where all of my angles are going to go. So in other words, theta one, is right here, always with respect to the perpendicular line to the surface, just like the normal force from physics one. And depending on what the surface is, our light could either bend this way in the direction of the blue, or it could bend this way in the direction of the green. I'm gonna draw them in separate scenarios. First, for the blue, I'll call this theta two, it's angle two. You will have this scenario when N1 is less than n2. So this is the scenario where n1 is less than n2. It's going to bend more towards the middle, the light that is. And then if I have the opposite scenario where light's coming in, here's my angle, theta one, and I have n1 and n2 again, well, if n1 is greater than n2, then that means it's going to bend this way instead. It's going to bend away from the vertical line. And we're going to use Snell's law to find the exact angles where this happens. So just to sum it all up in one phrase, the higher the index of refraction, the lower the angle. This is an inverse relationship here. So let's look at a couple practice problems. Let's say my light is going to be entering a pool of water where n equals one for air and n equals 1.33 for the water. I'm giving you these values. I don't think you'll ever have to solve for them. So here you go. And then the question is when the light bends, first of all, we know it's gonna bend more towards the middle because it is a bigger index of refraction. I'm gonna ask you to solve for theta two, given that the angle here for N1 is 30 degrees, let's say. By the way, if I told you the other angle, if I told you this one was 30 degrees, you'd have to do 90 minus 30 to get the other angle, but I'm not gonna make you do that right now. So instead, we just go straight into the formula. N1 sine theta one equals N2 sine theta two. N1 is one times the sine of 30 degrees is equal to 1.33 times the sine of theta two. If I wanna solve for theta two here, I first gotta divide both sides by 1.33. So one times the sine of 30 is 0.5, divided by 1.33, that is equal to the sine of theta two. And if I wanna solve for theta two, I gotta take the arc sine of that value, 0.5, divided by 1.33. And if I plug this in a calculator, and making sure my calculator's in degrees, then I get theta two equals 22.1 degrees. And this makes perfect sense to me because the angle is smaller than the original 30, so this is perfect. So that's it for the first one. Now let's look at another scenario. Let's say this time I have literally the exact opposite. I'm already underwater, I've got my scuba gear, and I wanna look back into the sun up at the, the surface of the water. Let's say once again, I'm looking at an angle of 30 degrees, here n equals 1.33 again, and here n equals one for air. And as we all know, the light is going to bend away from the vertical line 
and that's because we're going to a smaller value of n. Smaller value of n means a bigger angle for theta 2. And we're going to do the exact same thing basically for the math, but you'll see we get a different answer. And the reason why is because now n1 is 1.33 and n2 is the 1. So I say n1, 1.33, times sine of theta 1, which is now the 30 degrees underwater, is equal to n2, which is the 1, times sine of theta 2. And now I'm solving for theta 2. So basically the same thing as before, 1.33 times sine 30, that's going to be 0.665 equals 1 times sine theta 2, that's still sine theta 2. And if I want to solve for theta 2, again, I just take the arc sine of both sides. And I plug this in my calculator, and I get theta 2 equals 41.7 degrees. Like I said, the angle would get bigger. So hopefully there's no questions on that one. We're now just going to look at one more example today. Again, same example that we've been doing. This time I will start underwater, but this time I'm going to increase my angle to 49 degrees. And once again, the light comes out like this. It's going to be a higher angle because this is n equals 1 for air and 1.33 for water. And now this is theta 2. I would encourage you to do this on your own now that you know how to do it. The only problem is this is a, a weird scenario, which is why we're looking at it. So once again, I'm going to say n1 sine theta 1, which is 1.33 times the sine of 49. It's the first case. And on the other side, I have 1 sine of theta 2. So I plug in 1.33 times sine 49 in my calculator, and I get 1.004 as my decimal. On the right side, still sine of theta 2. Now, when I take the arc sine of both sides, the arc sine of 1.004 gets me an error on my calculator. Uh-oh, that's not good. The reason why this happened is because you can't take the arc sine of a number greater than 1. So as soon as I have greater than 1, that's, that's a problem. And I knew it was going to be an error. And what this is saying back to my picture is that Basically, the angle would be greater than 90 degrees, which doesn't entirely make sense. So what basically happened here is we hit the critical angle. What's the critical angle? The critical angle is where you get an error on your calculator. The real definition of a critical angle for Snell's law is when you're doing the n1 sine theta 1 equals n2 sine theta 2, but the angle is 90 degrees for the second one and then you would be solving for theta 1. Theta 1 would be your actual critical angle. And critical angles only happen when n1 is greater than n2. I promise you this cannot happen the other way when n2 is greater than n1. So first, you only have to worry about critical angles about half the time, and it's only when the angle is large enough where this happens. But that still doesn't answer the question of what's going on with this example, so I'll tell you. When you reach the critical angle, like we did right here with the 49 degrees, by the way, the actual critical angle here was 48.7 degrees for this example. And I know that because I did 1.33 sine of theta 1 equals 1 times sine 90. And if you solve this for theta 1, you get 48.7, meaning any angle greater than 48.7, like 49 for instance, you get an error on your calculator. And what happens when you reach the critical angle is that you get complete reflection. So what does that mean? It means that the light coming in, if it comes in at 49 degrees, it's going to perfectly reflect, bounce off, and go that way at 49 degrees. No equation required. And you may have noticed this in real life. Whenever you look during the daytime and you look at like a, a store with windows on it and you can sometimes see a reflection, well, the reason for that is Snell's Law, why you see a reflection there. And I can say that the more you look at the store from an angle, like not head on, like from an angle, you look at the store, the more it's going to act like a mirror because of this property. And so there you go. There's a good introduction to Snell's Law. I encourage you to try some problems on your own now that you can find online. Thank you all for watching. I hope you have a great rest of your day, and I'll see you in the next video. Take care, and bye-bye.